What's going on guys? Colin here for your gaming news update. Now, that is quite annoying. Uh, I was just doing the video for you guys and I don't know, exactly know what happened, but something happened and it forced my uh, recording to stop. So I don't know what the hell happened there, but uh, nonetheless, here we go again. Uh, so, the video is normally would have been uploaded for you guys yesterday. But I didn't have time. I've been very busy between yesterday and today uh, with running errands. Uh, late last night, um, we bought a new pool and set it up. So that took the majority of my night. And then when we got done doing that, I came in and started uh, to do Mirror's Edge, uh, a session of Mirror's Edge for you guys. <clears throat> and then once I got done doing that, um, I had enough time to like upload one more video and then go to bed. Then today when I uh, woke up, I watched the world premiere of Watch Dogs 2. It looks awesome, guys. I think they've done an amazing job at rebooting it. It has nothing to do with Aiden Pierce. It's a completely new protagonist with a completely new story. But the hacking, that they completely improved on the hacking. You can hack so much stuff. Like, I saw him hack a uh, forklift and pick up a police car and throw it off the pier. Uh, oh, it's being done in San Francisco, by the way, which is awesome. Um, I saw him hack a crane. Uh, there's, like, a little flying helicopter robot that you can have to fly around and spy on things or figure out where enemies are. There was a, another little driving car thing that you can control to go, you know, spy on people and whatnot. Um, they completely redid, uh, like, his fighting style. Like, you can take a pool table ball, and they drill a hole in it, and you wrap a, uh, rope around it, and you use that as a weapon. He was using that in the game, which was badass. Uh, or you can just, you know, use whatever types of gun that you want, and just go in guns a Obviously, that option's available, too. Uh, you can be more crafty and sneak around if you want. Um, they added parkour into it. Like, the new protagonist knows how to do parkour, and that was pretty badass. <clears throat> so, uh, what I will do is I will find what I watched, and I will put it into a link below here for you guys to watch. And then... Uh, Today, obviously, you guys are getting the news. <laughs> and then, um, let's see. I'm going to play more Homefront the Revolution. Because there's a tiny part that I'm stuck on right now, which hopefully I'll get past. We'll get past that. Um, so, it's going to be, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between Homefront the Revolution and Mirror's Edge Catalyst right now. And then at the end of the month, uh, I'll be getting into... Technomancer, which looks, that game looks like it's going to be a ball, so. Alright guys, uh, what were the first thing we're going to hop into here? First thing I want to hop into is uh, a game called Heroes of the Storms. And there's a new character that was put in. And the reason why I'm going over this is just because I found it funny. Okay, after first receiving uh, the new character that was put in, it's called, uh, I don't know if I'll say this right, Medava. After first revealing him in May, Blizzard has officially detailed Medava, the new Warcraft character coming to Heroes of the Storm. Medava is a specialist class hero who, at least on paper, has the potential to dramatically change a match. This is due to a number of factors, all of which are featured in the video above. First, rather than mounting up, his passive allows him to transform into a raven. While in this form, he moves 15% faster, is invulnerable to damage, and can both see over and fly over terrain. This provides him with the ability to scout out the enemy team without putting himself at risk. That's a pretty cool ability to have right there. The first of his abilities, uh, abilities uh, let's see, his uh, Arcane Rift is nothing terribly exciting. He shoots an attack in a straight line that deals damage <clears throat> at his and has its cooldown reduced if it hits an enemy hero. 
force of will is much more impactful as it protects an ally from all damage for 1.5 seconds. Timed correctly, that could completely negate enemy heroics or other hard-hitting abilities. His third ability, <coughs> Portal, is what I find the most intriguing of the bunch. This creates a portal where Medava is and another at the targeted location, allowing him and his allies to instantly move between the two spots for six seconds. A talent choice allows the first portal's location to be chosen as well, offering more flexibility. This could be used to chase down enemies or to allow an entire team to quickly escape, saving them the need to, say, walk around an obstacle. Uh, Madavi's heroic abilities are also interesting for the utility role they serve. Leyline Seal shoots out a slow-moving wave in a line that places enemies in stasis for three seconds, allowing teammates to escape or get into position to secure, secure kills. The other heroic choice is Play Bomb, turning an enemy into flying sheep for two seconds, during which times they can attack or use abilities or they can't attack or use abil abilities. When the two seconds are up, the effort spreads to all enemies near that player. This happens repeatedly until no one is polymorphed, making it a serious concern in close quarter team fights. Metavi launches Heroes of the Storm on June 14th. Okay, now, the whole reason why I, f I read that to you guys is because I found it hilarious that he can throw people into the air and uh <laughs> and uh <laughs> turn them into sheep. <laughs> That's so stupid, but it's funny. <laughs> I like it. So I figured I'd uh I'd read that to you guys. Just to give you a laugh. That certainly gave me one. And the next thing we're gonna go over here is um Another game has been leaked, big shocker, because that seems to be the thing to do nowadays is people love to leak game pictures, game footage, ahead of their reveals. Apparently, people do not have patience to wait. <laughs> but whatever. Alright, um, the game that got leaked ahead of E3 was Dead Rising 4. Now, I know, I'm sure there's... um. A lot of people that follow the Dead Rising franchise, I, however, am not one of them. I did play the first one when it came out, but then after that, I didn't play anymore. And honestly, I can't remember why. It might have been because I didn't have a system that I could play them on at the time or something. I don't, I don't remember, but I, I played one, and then after all the rest that came out afterwards, I never played. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so, posters for the unannounced Dead Rising 4 have popped up online ahead of E3 2016 next week. Posted on This Gen Gaming, the images show a character who appears to be Frank West walking around a snowy location. Backing up the claims, Kotoku said today, citing sources that the setting could be Willamette, Colorado. This is where the first Dead Rising took place. Interesting that they're going back to where the original took place. A reveal at Microsoft's E3 2016 briefing a week from today was also mentioned, suggesting Dead Rising 4 might have some kind of special relationship with Xbox One. Predecessor Dead Rising 3 launched as an Xbox One exclusive before coming to PC later. If Dead Rising is indeed real and coming to Xbox One, it could also ship for PC if the reports about Project Phoenix are true. This is supposedly the name for Microsoft's efforts to release all flagship titles across console and PC. In May, during an earnings briefing, Capcom said it would launch three unannounced games before April of 2017. One of the games is expected to sell 4 million copies, suggesting it may come from an established franchise. Though nothing yet has tied this to Dead Rising, it's also worth noting that there are rumors that Resident Evil 7 could be announced at E3 as well. They approached a Capcom representative and he declined to comment. Microsoft's E3 2016 briefing takes place on Monday, June 13th, starting at 9.30 a.m. So if Dead Rising 4 is real, 
Hopefully they're releasing it at E3. And then the uh, very, very last thing I got for you guys. Today's been a uh, slower day for the um, news updates for you guys. Well, okay, not slower, but less of a video this time around. You know, usually my videos run anywhere between mm, 20 minutes to a half hour. But uh, this week and last week's videos, uh, they're, they're not going to be that long this time just because uh, the stuff that I'm getting for you guys is a, a little bit shorter. It's not so lengthy. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, EA's E3 2016 briefing will include games coming in 2017 and 2018. The publisher is to showcase Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, uh, FIFA and FIFA 17, as well as games coming further down the road. With just a few more days to go before EA's E3 2016 briefing, the company has now teased some of the games it will showcase during the event. On display are titles uh, you know, Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, FIFA 17, Madden, NFL 17, NHL 17. Additionally, EA teased it will showcase games coming in 2017 and 2018. EA did not say anything more about these further out games, but possibly they could be the company's Assassin's Creed style action games. EA's E3 event, which is called EA Play, will show off some of EA's most anticipated games launching later this year and next, with a few surprises from games beyond that. EA said this uh, in a press release today. EA Play is taking place in Los Angeles and London. The LA event will be hosted by EA CEO Andrew Wilson, while EA Chief Officer... Peter Murray will run the London event. Both briefings are scheduled to begin at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which comes out to 9 p.m. London time. Immediately following the U.S. event, EA will host a Battlefield 1 live stream where two teams of 32 players will square off. These teams will be made up of well-known YouTube personalities, while famous people like recently retired NFL running back Marshawn Lynch Rapper Wiz Khalifa and EDM artist Zed will complete. Complete. Compete. Additionally, if you're attending EA Play in person, you can get an autograph from LA Rams running back Todd Gurley and a limited edition Titanfall 2 poster designed by Todd McFarlane. Attendees will also have an opportunity to make a custom World War I inspired Battlefield 1 dog tag. That's cool. I like dog tags. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, oh, sorry guys, just ignore that little bit. Okay. And that is all I got on that little tiny bit of info. Like I said, guys, today was not going to be very much. It's going to be a shorter video. Um, not too much to go on for this week. Uh, like I said, you know, it's been a very busy week for me for, uh, between my regular job and then coming home and rendering videos, uploading them to YouTube, trying to fit in time for gameplay. It's been a very, very busy week. And then, you know, having to go run errands and do that kind of stuff. Uh, so today, let's see, today I'll be hopping back into Homefront the Revolution. Try to get a little bit further than that. I am stuck on a part right now. Hopefully I can get past it. I'm stuck on the part, uh, what's it called? Hearts and Minds. Um, I'm at 95%, and for whatever reason, I can't get past that. So I'm missing something. I'll get past it. And then um, we have Mirror's Edge Catalyst. More to play on that, and I have more uploads uh, to upload of that. The last video of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is actually uploading right now, and then the turtle game is done. And then um, 
at the end of uh, June, we are going to be hopping into Technomancer, which that game looks like it's going to be a ball. And then July, as of right now, July, I don't think I have anything. So that means I will probably hop into one of my two games that I put to the side, which would be um, Hard Reset Redux and Dishonored. Because Dishonored 2 is coming out in November, and I want to play the first one, you know, before I get to the second one. And I I put those two games to the side just in case there was downtime, you know. And then in August is No Man's Sky, which is like August 9th, maybe? I know it's at the beginning of August is when they're releasing it. And then... Oh, at the end of August is uh, Do Sex Mankind Divided. And then September. I can't remember offhand if there are any releases in September that I'm getting my hands on or not. Obviously, eventually, before the summer's over, I'll let you guys know. Uh, and that is it for right now. That is all I got for you guys. Like I said, it's going to be a shorter video for today. Next week, we'll see if maybe I can make a longer one, and uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, guys, do me a huge favor. If you like what I got going on, please smash that like button. It helps me out. And uh, obviously, hopefully you guys like it enough to uh, subscribe and uh, stay in tune with me, because I always have content coming out for you guys. Usually, majority of the time, I have content coming out every day. You know, giving you guys at least something to watch. Okay, guys. Um, that's all I got for right now. All right, guys. I will uh, see you guys next week, so tune in. And uh, obviously, stay, stay safe. Love you guys. Deuces.